The General Assembly has been sitting this last week and underlying many of the discussions was the thought that as different denominations we should be working much more closely with each other. And so to begin our worship today I'm showing you an exciting new project we have in Ardnamurchan. The church at Cajon, at the furthest western point of the UK, had to be closed some four years ago. It was due to the amount of money it would have needed to bring it back to an acceptable level. It was sold and the proceeds of the sale are going towards building a new, fit-for-purpose place of worship. It is hoped that this will provide space for some community activities as well as worship for Christian congregations in the area. All Christian congregations in the area. It is hoped that the work will begin in August, so after a very slow start and overcoming many barriers and challenges, it is ex exciting to think that this place is about to materialise. A testament to determination and the good news of the Gospel. And it's up to us to make these proposals and these intentions to materialise also. Come and let us worship our God. Let us pray. Risen, ascended, loving Lord, we lift up our hearts and voices to you, singing Alleluia and rejoicing that you are enthroned as King, King of Earth, King of our solar system, King of distant stars and King of things beyond. King of heaven, King of all, 
but still our shepherd, brother, friend. Across this nation, around this planet, loving Lord, groups of people are meeting and giving you praise. Meeting physically and meeting via the internet and airwaves. In city cathedrals, country churches, community centres, chapels, homes, shacks, in the open air, on bustling streets, in quiet highland glens, on industrial sites, in parks, in deserts, in rainforests, on beaches, on battlefields. You are at home in each one, and though our songs and styles differ, you hear the praise of honest hearts. And it is indeed right, both our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks and praise. But we realise that we do not always do this. Sometimes we carry on our daily lives, forgetting that all we enjoy, that all we have, are gifts from you. And we forget to thank you. Lord, have mercy. Sometimes we do not live as your children. We put aside your law to love God and love neighbour, thinking only of ourselves. Christ, have mercy. Sometimes we ignore your call to be one family, one church, and deepen rather than heal divisions. Lord, have mercy. In your great mercy, forgive us for the thoughts, words and deeds that have hurt your kingdom. Amen. Reading from John's Gospel, chapter 17, reading verses 20, to 26. I pray not only for them, but also for those who believe in me because of their message. I pray that they may all be one. Father, may they be in us just as you are in me and I am in you. May they be one, so that the world will believe that you sent me. I gave them the same glory you gave me so that they may be one, just as you and I are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be completely one, in order that the world may know that you sent me, and that you love them as you love me. Father, you have given them to me, and I want them to be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory the glory you gave me, for you loved me before the world was made. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know that you sent me. I made you known to them, and I will continue to do so, in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and so that I also may be in them. Amen. And may God bless these words to us. This week, just gone, I've been a commissioner at the General Assembly, which has been held in Edinburgh. But I've joined in by Zoom, which was a different experience, worked extremely well. Well, the General Assembly meets every year and it's a court of the church. It is there so that it, it, it meets so that it can review the rules and regulations 
uh, adjust them and change them if necessary. It's a time also to affirm the direction of the church, examining and affirming the underpinning theology and doctrines, as well as having some time to consider how the message of God can be delivered to those who need to hear. It's also a time of fellowship across presbyteries, congregations, countries and denominations because invitations are given to representatives of different denominations and countries and we learn a huge amount from them. Using the image of a relay race, I suppose you could say that during this time the baton is being examined to make sure that it's fit for purpose before it's passed on for the next leg of its journey. Each day starts with a time of worship and the power of prayer is affirmed as it is in our decision making, discussions and so forth. During the years that I've attended the General Assembly it's been interesting for me to see how opinions have changed over the years, albeit slowly. The attitude towards same-sex marriages is a case in point and this year the General Assembly agreed that ministers could conduct same-sex marriages if they so wished. Now clearly that would not be acceptable to some people and so that phrase if they so wished hopefully would de defray the, the decision or the dilemma that some might be faced with of whether they stayed within a church that made a decision that they didn't agree with or whether they would have to leave. The history of the church is littered with divisions and breakaway groups and by having a broader umbrella hopefully many more can stay under it thus reinforcing the togetherness and the unity which would benefit everyone. Each year the ecumenical dialogue has become greater as we've all realised that we serve the same God and accept that the baton that we hold might be slightly different from the one held by the person beside us. But the whole point in having a baton is for it to be handed over for the next stage of the journey. We don't stop the race to argue about the baton, but we keep moving forward together. In the past, it has been said that the goal of ecumenical talks is unity. But this week, it was helpfully suggested that we start from a unity which accepts difference, agreeing that unity does not mean uniformity. Unity accepting difference should be the starting point of our deliberations as we move forward together. We began the service by looking at some uh, sketches, some photographs of what will happen at Kilhorn, the project that we're hoping will start in August today. We've got all the permissions in place, the project will start, the building will be built, but for it to become what we want it to become will require exactly what we've just been talking about, a unity that accepts difference. The invisible barriers between the different denominations and the different opinions won't disappear. We'll have to make an effort to get over those. So in Cajon, with that project, we hope that with time and effort, with openness, that unity will be achieved, that we will accept that it's a unity which accepts difference. And in this way, we can spread God's word. The building is due to be started in, or the groundworks are due to be started in August. So hopefully, if people are entering into this project with this willingness, it can only succeed. And no doubt, in a short while, we will soon find out whether that's the case. Lord God, we thank you, we praise you, we bless you, we glorify you. You have filled your creation with good things and provided for all our needs. Help us always to be thankful and to share justly and generously with others. We pray for your Holy Church. As you were one God, so your Church is truly one. 
despite all we have done to mar its unity. Grant your faithful people true love for you and for each other, that the world may know that we are one in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the congregations we represent, for those meeting in buildings around Lachava, for those who have found a new worshipping community in the online services. Wherever they are, may they be a sign of your love to those around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local communities, for all who provide essential services, for those who maintain good order, and for those whose presence and service is less visible to those around them. Support them and bring their offerings to good effect for the unity of your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the wider world for all the uncertainty and rancour of many international situations, where there is outright war or just political impasse. Help people to seek your will above limited interests and bring your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, for all suffering in body, mind or spirit, for those who care for them, for the stresses of today's life, for all who are struggling to maintain their daily life. Grant the healing that comes from you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, known to us or unmissed. May they find rest with you, and may we all be united in your glorious kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, bringing before you our various cares and concerns. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your church, living and at rest, we commend ourselves and one another to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us dedicate our offering. Let us pray. Father God, we are glad, on the whole, that we do not know what the future holds for us. If it was all going to be good, we might become too complacent. If it was all going to be too awful, we might give up in despair. We hope we would be like Peter, who was told what kind of death he was going to die if he continued to follow Jesus, but he did not hesitate. He had let his master down once and he was not going to do it again. Father God, we bring these our offerings as a pledge of our loyalty to your kingdom. Thank you for believing in us when we have lost confidence in ourselves. Overcome our objections with your generous grace and keep us faithful to the end. 
Amen. And let us join together in the family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Thank you for joining in our worship today. Jesus needed his friends to know that he wanted to spend time with them. He needed them to listen, to hear without being overwhelmed by guilt. They needed to be reminded about all that had happened in the past, make sense of all that was happening in the present, and to be prepared for what would happen in the future. He hadn't given up on them, and he wouldn't. He would continue to speak to them 
and sometimes use words. We are God's emissaries for the gospel and as the disciples be forwards, we move forwards with the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen.